how are you? Welcome to the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel. On the community tab right now, you'll find a poll inviting you to choose from four videos for me to put up. Right now I'm doing research for part 11 of the new Christian history of the church. And I need to take my time. This is the hardest part. Even mainstream modern church history doesn't know much of what to make of this part. It's the part from right after the Council of Nicaea up through, you know, your first Council of Constantinople, your Council of Ephesus. I suspect the reason this part of history is so fragmented is it's the century leading up to the fall of Rome. Uh, power and leadership in the church shift to the east uh, under Justinian. And you don't see anything happening much in the West for the church until the rise of the uh, Benedictine monks. So there's a lot here and I want to get it right. One thing we've done so far with this new series is we've gotten a lot right. We've made a lot of discoveries. We're taking the time to do the research and put something new out there for people uh, to help support our faith. We're telling the truth about Christianity, separating the objective from the subjective. Uh, we're creating narrative apologetics tools for the post-Christian missions field. Um, the reason I put those four videos out there for you to choose, I filmed them, but I wasn't happy with them. I like this idea of maybe acting some of this stuff out instead of just reading it to make the history more interesting. But I want it to be done with actors. But in the meantime, I have, uh, I shot one with myself as Sylvester, the 34th Bishop of Rome. I shot one as Athanasius. I shot one as Arius, where I kind of went crazy, the crazy heretic guy. And I also filmed myself preaching chapter four of Galatians, since we've done chapters one, two, and three on our Sunday Night Lives. So pick one and I'll put it up. It, they're not great. They're I'm just not happy with them, you know? So, but I'll put them out there for you if you want to see them. Tonight, I want to tell you a story about a writing from an early church character named Hegesippus. He is alive in 140. Um, his kind of key lifetime seems to be around 175, 180. Um, he makes mention of Soter and Eulithurus, who were bishops of Rome. Uh, so it kind of helps us peg his time period. But the story he tells is interesting and it verifies what we have found to be the case about church history thus far. We have said, hey, the church today is just like the church back then. There wasn't one pure church and then later it split. He even admits this. So Hegesippus in his story, he says, hey, I was traveling to Rome. Uh, stopping at cities along the way and I spent some time at Corinth and I spent some time with the believers there and I found that everybody was living peacefully of one accord with one doctrine and every city I went to on the way to Rome I found Christians unified in their message all seven sects of Christians what yes he says even then in 140 there were seven main sects of Christians and they were all unified. They were in one accord. It was commonly known that they were just different versions of the Christian faith. This is in historical document. Then he says something interesting. He says, and, and then in about 140, you start seeing certain writers, people who were slated to be bishops, but never became bishop and were overlooked. And then they started going off with ideas of their own. <gasps> Go figure, we've heard this too. And he names Valentinus, he names Marcion, he names several of the people who uh, Irenaeus and his pupil Hippolytus would write about in Against Heresies, and he calls them heretics. This is about the time we find the word heretic used for the first time also by Pius I, the 11th Bishop of Rome, uh, in reference to Jewish Christians. And in fact, Hegesippus goes on to say, oh, we find Jewish sects who were against Judah and against the Christ, as if to suggest the tribe of Judah by this time had gone Christian. And he names Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and he names a few others. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but I just find this interesting because it's another document with further verification. Now, let's tell the whole truth. You can't necessarily go online and buy the writings of Hegesippus because they're lost to time. 
but they're accounted for in histories, not just Eusebius, but uh, Socrates Scholasticus, Sozomen, they all have them in their footnotes, right? So during their time, the 300s, 400s, they had the writings of Hegesippus. They knew the titles, they knew where the books originated from. So I'm left with a choice. Do I say, well, I don't have the original document, so it's a lie, I can't trust it as an objectively factual source. Or do I say, well, what has been my experience thus far with Eusebius? Well, I go to Eusebius and I find a document called Against Heresies written by Irenaeus. Sure enough, I go and I find a document called Against Heresies written by Irenaeus that I can read myself. He makes reference to writings by these people that he speaks of negatively, like Valentinus, which he calls a heretic. And I'm able to go find his writings. You can find the writings of all these people that are called heretics. And as, as I've covered in several of the installments so far of the, the new uh, Christian history of the church, I'm hesitant to call them heretics because in hindsight, we can see what is happening. We can see that there was an understanding early via Christology of a triune God. But it wasn't easily understood because Jesus, remember the saying I say, oh, Jesus didn't hand us a book and say, use these cups, make worship an hour, sing these songs. There weren't instructions on how this worked. So the, the early purpose of the church for many centuries was to try to define and understand what this triune nature of God was, what it meant specifically. If we can define it, we can teach it. And I find it interesting when you take someone like Peter Kreeft, who is a great uh, professor, debater, theologian. Um, he says, well, to debate you, and win and argue, you have to have three things. You have to have agreement on the definitions of terms, uh, logically consistent proofs, and true premises. Well, that's essentially what was being created uh, through these writings of Valentinus, these heretics, Marcion with Docetism, Montanism, uh, Theodosius and his adoptionism, uh, Sibelius and his modalism. These, th what they're doing is they're trying to understand this concept of a triune nature and just not quite getting the mark. Um, in fact, what I read to you in part 10 of the New Christian History of the Church about this uh, Council of Nicaea, how strange it was that, you know, uh, what ended up winning out in time and history was Jesus is consubstantial with God when in the short term it did nothing but create absolute chaos. Uh, but anyway, this is all really interesting stuff and it's a, a privilege to be able to study it. It's a privilege to be able to deliver it to you. And uh, looking forward to talking more and doing more live streams and stuff. I've got about two weeks left of my boots on the ground job and then I'll have uh, more time to devote solely to my uh, daily research. Maybe, uh, as you know, there are times through the year where I even can do daily uploads. It just depends on the, the schedule. So looking forward to it and uh, God bless you guys. I look forward to talking to you soon. Pick one of those videos on the list in the poll in the community tab and I'll put it up for you. Um, just don't make fun of me because I know they're corny. That, that's why I didn't put them up because I, I didn't care for them too much. Maybe you guys will. Uh, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Yeah, check it out. See what you can find out about Hegisipus. H-E-G-G-I-S-I-P-U-S. Hegisipus. Talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.